of those director things that click. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, cut! Never mind. We're gonna redo that. I've been told by Mr. Jeffrey here that the front end on this charger is one pothole away from catastrophic failure. We're gonna drive it into the garage, jack it up, and see just how bad it actually is. So Jeff came prepared. We have a, a full front end rebuild kit from Amazon, loaded struts, and a drilled and slotted disc brake rotor setup because they were the same price as the regular ones. If this goes well, we'll throw links for all these parts in the description below. That side's not even loose, Jeffrey. That's definitely bad. I don't think it's about to fall apart. It feels like death wobble in a Dodge truck. So, we're gonna see just how close to falling off the tie rod actually was. It's not gonna break. There's. Yeah, it's, it's, there's way more captured on that, that tie rod than you think. So the first shop that worked on my pickup, he said he's worked on a shitload of these and he worked for a used car lot. And he said those lower arms that go forward and backward, mm -hmm. he said they're always junk. So I figured that's what the clunking was. Well, they're, they're loose. I mean... So, the way this front end works is the whole, those arms, as you turn the wheels, they go backward and forward. So that rubber bushing on the inside is constantly flexing back and forth. So it just wears out the rubber. Yeah, so the, the rubber in here is, it's pretty loose. It's not like it's gonna fall off, but it's pretty loose. Well, I didn't think that any control arms are gonna come off. So the question is, do the inner tie rods feel, I guess we ought to change them anyway? Um, they thread onto that rack. Yeah, we'll change them, we have them. There's no point in not changing them. So obviously this one wasn't about to have a catastrophic failure. It felt <laughs> like it. But we're gonna go ahead and we've got all the parts here. He drove eight hours down here to do this. He just wanted to see us. He didn't actually need work done on the car. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and uh, put all these parts on, basically rebuild the front end, and then uh, hopefully get it lined up for an alignment tomorrow. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take the brake caliper and the caliper brackets off of the spindle. We're going to let that soak for a while. It's rusty. Is it? Yeah. Shop shares, Jeffrey. I'm tired of it. You can finish. Um. <laughs> I didn't bring enough clothes. <laughs> you have a washer and dryer? Oh, okay. Now that we have our rotors off and our calipers out of the way, we're going to go ahead and take the dust cover off next. And you don't have to do this, but it just will make it easier to see what you're doing in here. We're gonna go get a new battery. So in order to get that uh, nut off that radius rod ball joint, we're gonna jack the car back up a little bit. My impact won't fit. Now we're gonna take all three of the ball joints off the bottom of the knuckle, the tie rod, the radius rod, and the lower control arm. Got 
that nut isn't even that hot, is it? It's just that cold. <laughs> it's, no, it's not that hot. In order to make it easier to get to this nut on the ball joint for the lower control arm back here, I'm gonna go ahead and take the, the top apart first. Pull the bracket off that holds the brake line and the wire for the ABS sensor. Just a 10 millimeter bolt going in the back. It's a six millimeter bolt, 10 millimeter head. And then the ABS sensor goes into the back of the spindle right here. Same 10 millimeter wrench. When you pull the ABS sensor off, just if you carefully wiggle it, it should come right out. Um, it is plastic, so be very careful that you don't break it if you want to reuse it. And then to separate the upper ball joint, if you're reusing it, a lot of times you can smack it from the end with the hammer. And eventually it'll come out. But since we're not reusing this, we're gonna go ahead and use a pickle fork. The bad part about a pickle fork is it has a tendency to ruin the boot when you do this. So if you're reusing it, you might wanna try a little harder by shocking the, the spindle. We're also gonna go ahead and get our other ball joints loose before we take the lower ball joint off. That way the spindle stays up here. Again, we're not reusing any of this, so we're not too concerned about the threads. So we're gonna do it the easy way. Just take it and smack it with a hammer. They come right out. And one more time I'm gonna say, if you're reusing any of these parts, do not remove them this way. We'll try the pickle fork instead. That's not doing anything. If all else fails, get a bigger hammer. I guess we'll try some heat. I don't know if this propane torch is gonna get hot enough to do much, but we're gonna try. Now we've gotta get rid of the mushroom portion of the threads on top of that in order to get it the rest of the way out. Again, don't do this. Don't do it this way if you're planning on reusing any of these parts. Next, we're gonna remove the strut. Even though we're not replacing it, we are replacing the upper control arm. And in order to get the bolts out of the upper control arm, the strut has to be out of the way. So we're gonna go ahead and take the strut out of the way. On the sway bar end links, they're gonna have a, they're gonna be like this tie rod here. And it's gonna have a, a hex. There's nothing to hold on the actual ball joint portion of it. So once you break it loose with your 21 millimeter socket, you're gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and a 21 millimeter wrench. You're gonna hold the nut with the wrench and then turn the shaft to the right to spin it out of the nut. Once I get that out, I'll show you more of what I meant. So the reason we're not replacing the struts is because when Jeff ordered them, he accidentally ordered the struts for all wheel drive. And the way you can see the difference between those are the rear wheel drive strut has this yoke welded to the bottom of it with the mount for the sway bar. The all wheel drive is gonna have a smooth finish here 
and it takes a, a bolt, a yoke that actually bolts onto the strut and has the sway bar mount. So if you are ordering parts and you have a rear wheel drive and you get a strut that looks like this, it's not gonna work. You need one that looks like this. To remove the upper control arm, you gotta come to the top side and on the strut tower on the front here and the back down there where you can't see, there is a nut. And that goes through a bolt that holds the upper control arm. And on the inside of that bolt, there's a tab welded on it so that you don't have to hold the bolt, you just have to turn the nut. And I really wish I had an 18 millimeter ratcheting wrench. We pulled this cover off and pulled this crossbar off that goes behind the engine here. And that was to give us access to the bolts on the back side of the strut tower. And then the computer, the engine computer actually rests right down in there and gets bolted on through this bolt in the crossbar there's enough wire on it that if you're careful you can pull it up out of the way and you get full access to that bolt in the back here now we're going to remove the bolt out of this radius rod you can see how bad the bushing in that thing is it's absolutely destroyed and it just has a bolt that goes through that end you probably will have to pull this lower cover down and out of the way to get the bolt out far enough to get that out fortunately there's not enough room to get a socket on either side of this so you just have to use a wrench and you actually have to use the open end of the wrench on the nut. How can you get back in there? On this side, the bolt came right out, so now I just have to find it. On this side, you'll be able to see what I was talking about with the... So it's already spinning that shaft. Now we just leave our wrench on there, grab our impact, put the 10 millimeter socket on the shaft, hold the wrench. Spin the shaft right out of the nut. If you couldn't see that, once this is on there, you put the socket on here and hold the nut. You have to turn the shaft to the right and that spins the nut to the left. In order to get the bolt out of the lower control arm here, you have to take this heat shield off and then take the sway bar mount off and it's got a two piece shell. When you remove the back shell, you'll get access to the bolt and it takes a 12 millimeter Allen wrench to turn the bolt or hold the bolt while you turn the other end. Then you just pull the sway bar down and out of the way. Once you take that rear shell off, there's a 12 millimeter Allen bolt in here that's the back side of the nut for the lower controller. Ooh. All right, so the last thing we have to pull off is the tie rod and to get it off we're just going to pull this clamp off the boot we've already removed the clamp on the inside and it's not reusable unfortunately pull the boot down the tie rod and then you can see here we've got the inner tie rod And then we're just going to use a pair of channel locks because I don't have a wrench that fits that. But this worked on the other side, so we're going to try it on this side too. I ended up having to use a pair of or a pipe wrench to get it loose. I couldn't get a hold of it with my channel locks. It's a part. That's everything we're replacing is now removed from the car. The first step in putting it back together is going to be going over to the bench getting this ball joint out and building our tie rod the first step for getting the lower ball joint out is there's a c-clip or a circlip on the bottom of it and it's going to be frozen place take that off and then you're going to need some type of press there's i i mean you might be able to hammer that thing out of there but i, I don't think it's possible so what we're gonna use is this OTC ball joint tool. 
And you just gotta get all the right adapters. So we're gonna press on this side. So we need to support this other side and we'll use the big barrel. There's two in this kit. If you have this kit, there's two different, I don't know what these things are. These supports, one has a small hole, one has a big hole. You need the one with the bigger hole and it's gonna go on there like that. And then I imagine you're probably not advised to use an impact on this tool, but this one is old and it's been used with an impact its entire life. So we're gonna continue using it with an impact. We're just gonna space this up so that it's a little more straight on. Put that on there like that. And if you don't have one of these, um, they sell one at, at Harbor Freight that if you're not doing this all the time, it's probably good. I, I, if I didn't have this one, that's what I would get. Or you can rent them from your local auto parts store. To put the new one in, you have to find one of these barrels that fits over and needs to fit better than that. That's just gonna push the ball joint inside of it. So we need to use the small one. Well, the small one hits a rubber boot. So in order to not tear the boot, we're just gonna pull it off there. It's got that little split ring that clamps it on there. Just get it started and work it around. And the boot will come right off. Then <clears throat> there's no way this lines up. So I'm gonna put it in so that this, the slot in the top of this one indicates the opposite of the cotter pin. I want the cotter pin to go this way because it'll be easier to get in. So I'm gonna put it in that way. And I imagine this will turn once it's all in there if you, wanted, if you didn't get it the way you wanted it. This bolt is gonna be in the way so we'll have to pull it out. And then again, to fit over this, you'll have to use the support with the bigger hole in it. Line all that up. And then on this side, we'll have to use the support, but this is gonna get in the way of that ball joint coming all the way through. So we're gonna have to do one more step once we get it a little ways in there. Right now, the whole thing won't fit in there. Lightly press that down. Make sure you everything's nice and straight. So you're pressing the ball joint straight into the spindle or the knuckle. Now we're flush and we're, this is bottoming out against the bottom of the ball joint there. So then we made a special tool and this is just a piece of pipe that we cut off of the, the house jack that I used to make the pinion snubber for extra parts. And this would work if it wasn't so thick. It's just too thick to, to fit in there. We don't have enough throw on this tool. So now we're just gonna take this Line everything back up again. Clamp it down, make sure everything's straight. Pull that down to that ball joint is fully seated on the bottom of the spindle there. The last steps are to put your C-clip on there. And then you've got to get this boot back on there. And the way that I found is easiest to do that is to go ahead and take this split ring right off, press your boot on there and get it down over that uh, um, barb is what I'm trying to say. And then once you have that fully over the barb, if you take your circlip, not circlip, if you take your split ring and just start one of the wires you can work it around the boot. If you have a hook pick, that'll probably make this a lot easier. 
just hook it on there. Yeah, much easier. Okay, now that's all together. The next thing we have to do is build our tie rod. The first step in building your new tie rod is to measure your old one. You just want to get everything nice and straight and measure from that face or a, any point. It, I mean, you pick, but I'm going to go from the face here to the center point of the tie rod ball joint. And it's just under 16 and a half, which is the same as the other side. Then disassemble your, remove your outer tie rod and the jam nut. Get your new tie rod, remove the jam nut. Put your tie rod boot and don't forget your clip. Install the new jam nut. And thread your new tie rod on and set it to the same length as what your old one was. And then don't jam that until you get it in the car. We're taking this car straight to the alignment shop when we get done. Uh, I recommend that. But if you're not going to, you'd be better to get this installed and then make your measurement after it's installed and jam the nut. Because you can turn this shaft. It does me no good to turn it right now because I don't know exactly where it needs to go. But if once it's installed in the car, you can turn the shaft so that your ball joint lines up when your measurement is exactly right. Don't forget to put your nut, your bolt back in the wheel bearing. Now we're gonna put it back together in the opposite order that we took it apart. With the exception of the tie rod, I'm gonna put it in after I put the lower control arm. I gotta go get the parts. So we're gonna start with the lower control arm. Your ball joint taper goes up, so the big part goes on the bottom and the nut goes on the top. Just slide it back in there. You'll have to move the washer down and get it inside of the little cavity that that bolt fits in. And then one other thing I wanna show you real quick. This looks slotted, but if you take the bolt that goes in there, it only goes through the center and it doesn't actually move back and forth. If you look down in here, you can see there's these two ridges in here and that's to allow this to pivot. I don't know why you would want it to pivot, but the bolt only goes through the center. So this is not actually slotted for an adjustment. It's for that bushing to move back and forth, I guess. I don't know why you'd want it to move like that, but that's how it works. When you're tightening these up, it's a good idea to get the control arm back in approximately the same position it was in so that the twist, when you let the car down, it doesn't twist that bushing as much. This rod, the ball joint goes from the top down so it goes in there like that right. and again just get the level about where it's going to be at right height tie rod goes under that one Probably should have put the tie rod in before we put this one in. I just loosened it up and moved it up out of the way. Just be careful when you're putting this in that you don't accidentally adjust the length of your tie rod. Now we'll go ahead and hook our sway bar back up. Gonna put the back plate in first. And then your bushing is gonna have witness marks of how it was installed before. If you reinstall it the same way, that's gonna make it much easier to get these bolts started.
reinstall your heat shield. Before you put your knuckle or spindle back on, make sure you pull your brake caliper to the back side, or it's gonna be very hard to get it where it goes. Next, we'll install our upper control arm. Put the bolts on from the top. Again, you want to make sure your upper control arm is approximately where it's going to be at right height when you install this. Tighten these bolts. The next thing we're going to reinstall is our strut. And when you put this in, the sway bar mount goes to the back and your caliper hose and ABS wire needs to go to the front side of it. And then it's time to put your sway bar end link in. On the new ones, a lot of times you won't have to turn the shaft just tightening the nut up will work, but sometimes you do have to use the 21 millimeter wrench and the 10 millimeter socket to do it. That one tightened up fine. I just did that one. When you get to this point, it's a good time to go ahead and hook your boot back in. There's a notch cut in the tie rod, the inner tie rod and it, the boot fits into it and just put your clamp on. And then we're gonna use zip ties for right now to get this thing to the alignment shop, but there, you wanna use uh, just, uh, I don't know what they, they're like CV, CV boot clips. Put them on there and there's a special tool to crimp them. Uh, you wanna put one of those back on there. They sell them at the auto parts store in various sizes. When you get ready to put your knuckle or spindle or whatever back on, just put the lower ball joint in and start your nut on it. Then put the, I guess we're gonna call it a radius rod. Start the nut on it. And then last, your tie rod and start the nut on it. And then your upper control arm. Then you just tighten everything down. There's a torque spec for all of these, so make sure you're following that. So now we're gonna collapse the caliper so we can put our new brake pads on. And I always hook up a hose and a container to the bleeder screw. That way as you're doing this, you don't push that nasty fluid back into the system. This car's got ABS and that ABS motor I was told way back in the day when stuff started first coming with ABS when I was working in a mechanic shop that that nasty fluid can mess up the ABS computers. So ever since then I've always done it this way.
if your kit came with grease fittings for the ball joints like ours came with grease fittings for the tie rod the upper ball joint and the lower ball joint and then also instead of having a lock nut on the lower ball joint it has a castle nut with the cotter pin now before you put that dust cover on it's a good time to install all that stuff reinstall your dust cover all you have this off is an easy time to go ahead and replace the little metal clips that hold your brake pads and they just slide in there just like that Sometimes when you get them, you'll find that the little tab that holds it is bent. You just have to straighten that back out. And just like that. Now you put this, get your rotor on there and bolt your caliper bracket back on. It never works out, but I always try not to get a bunch of oil and stuff all over the rotors. We'll clean them before we finish putting this together. But the less, you, less oil and fingerprints you have on there, the easier it is to clean them. Brake pads, they're exactly the same. One slides in on the inside, and one slides in on the outside. And then, these are your caliper slides in here. You need to make sure that they're nice and free and lubricated with caliper grease. So that will keep your brake pads wearing even because your caliper is free to move back and forth like it's supposed to. Just to make sure we don't have any air in the system, we're gonna bleed each of the calipers once or twice just to make sure we don't we didn't in introduce any air when we collapsed the calipers. Okay, press them and hold. Did they go all the way to the floor? Okay, let them up and press them one more time. Are they solid? They go to the floor. Okay. Let me do the other side. This cow panel piece. And the computer just sits down in here. And it's got a little bumper on the bottom, but it doesn't hook into anything. So it just sits in there and that's just like a little vibration dampener piece. Take your metal bar and this hooks into the wiper motor on the other side so you kind of have to line it up and push it into the wiper motor and then it goes under the box for the cabin air filter and under your bracket for the computer you have four bolts two on each side make sure this one goes through that computer bracket And then these wires clip into the bottom of this. There's just a slot. They press right up in there like that. There's one wire on the other side that also presses into it. This wire here goes in this little bracket that's sticking down for the wiper motor. Tighten all your bolts up. There's a couple of little rubber foam pieces that seal up the front of this. They just kind of set in there and then this plastic piece goes down on top of them. in the back just like that and then has these little Christmas trees in the front and if you get lucky like I think we're going to you'll be able to reuse your Christmas trees and then you have to put your wiper blade arms on and the longer of the two rods 
is the one that goes on the passenger side. If your windshield's filthy like this one is, you can line it back up with the marks on the windshield. Put your little caps back on. Well, Jeffrey's headed to the alignment shop to get an alignment done. Everything went really well. Um, I will say the parts off of Amazon seem to be good quality. I, I'm, you know, no testament to how long they're going to last, but they fit right. Everything seemed to be the exact same dimensions and built just like the originals. So I would use them again. If you've enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button. We do different stuff all the time. You never know what we're going to find ourselves getting into, but we'll see you soon.